Hi. Hi there. I'm back from vacation. Hi, I'm back from vacation and I am here with a recipe. Um, to thank Tabby for watching Blue for a whole week, I am going to make her some homemade Greek yogurt. She told me that she likes Nusa yogurt, which I think is something ridiculous like $2.15 for 8 ounces. It's ridiculous and I can make it for a lot less than that. So I get organic milk, but the cool thing is um, when you make yogurt, you sterilize the milk first. And so you can get milk that is actually on the manager special. I love the manager special. So I have some manager special milk and I had a little bit left over that um, is, it expires tomorrow. So this will extend the life of it. So I'm doing about a gallon and a half of milk. I usually just do a gallon of whole milk. I'm also using Greek yogurt. You need to use plain yogurt in order to make this. A small container is fine. Um, the reason why you need to use the plain yogurt is to get the starter culture. Um, some people say you can just use yogurt from a previous batch uh, and keep it going that way. Um, but I've read that you don't always get great results. Um, you really want a nice strong live culture. Other things that you need, a whisk, spatula, a spoon, a thermometer. If you're going to do Greek yogurt, you need cheesecloth. Some clips, these are just clothespins, a colander, and just something to put your spoon on. So I've got the pot that I'm using to make the yogurt. I washed it out, and I'm going to put all my equipment in it except for the thermometer because that'll make it blow up. Um, I'm even going to put the plate that I'm going to rest my spoon on. I have actually made yogurt where I wasn't super careful about doing the sterilization thing. And um, it came out like ropey and stringy and snotty and completely disgusting. So it really is worth your while to take that extra step and do that. I've also prepared my sink by cleaning it out really well. I'm going to put an ice water bath in here. And the last thing that I need is a um, heating pad. It's actually a back heating pad, but it works just great. Um, you can buy those yogurt makers with the little cups and it takes up all this room in your kitchen and I just obviously don't have room for that kind of stuff. Um, you might also notice that on my counter there's a mouse trap because that fucking cat is not only peeing on my bed, she is not protecting her food because you see right here, like that's her cat food and that's a mouse trap because a mouse comes out of there and it runs across here and it eats her cat food and she's not smart enough or motivated enough to protect her own food supply. I really hate that cat. So while I'm letting everything sterilize, I'm just gonna grab some cheesecloth. I'm actually not gonna use this until later this evening, tell you the truth, um, but I might as well get it done now. So I'm gonna take it, place it inside a well-washed colander and then I'm going to place clips. I stuck them in the water bath, actually, just to sterilize them. I'm telling you, I'm crazy about sterilization. So while it's not absolutely essential that you sterilize, like the clips that you use for straining the yogurt, because at that point you've arrested the process of the culture by putting your yogurt in the refrigerator, I just think, you know, you can never be too sure. So everything is now ready to go. So I'm going to set this aside in a place where Hopefully, that cat is not going to do something like pee in it and ruin it. Okay, so this has been steaming away for a few minutes now. Oh, that's so hot. Duh. Everything on the sterile plate in order to keep it from picking up any bacteria. I don't know if it's really that important to be like that whoop de doo crazy about it, but, you know, I figure it can't hurt. Who wants to make this twice? Now I'm taking the pan, I'm just dumping the water out. Don't need it anymore, you can reserve it if you want for, I don't know, something else. But now I'm gonna pour in my milk, my manager special milk. I placed the milk on the stove, set it to heat, 
and you want it to get to precisely 185 degrees on an instant read thermometer. Um, this is to kill off any bacteria that might spoil the batch, um, but you don't want to go too far. So 185 degrees, we're starting right here. Looks like at, well, it's in the 50s, so it's going to take a little bit of time. Meanwhile, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start an ice bath. So now I'm going to create an ice bath in the sink so I can arrest the milk heating process at precisely 185 degrees. So at that point we have killed all of the nasty bacteria that's going to cause problems with making the yogurt. And then we have to bring the temperature back down to 110 degrees. This is so we don't kill the um, active culture that is in the starter yogurt that we're using. So I cleaned the sink out because again, germs, bacteria cold water in the sink, and then it's always good to empty out your um, ice maker thing because it always freezes together because somebody leaves the door open. So I'm just going to let that sit until I am ready to go. So I'm just stirring the milk just to make sure that nothing burns on the bottom. I do like to use a heavy bottomed cook pot. And you just have to keep an eye on it. For the most part, yogurt is a really hands-off process, except for this part in the beginning. And then it's just a matter of being patient and kind of being around. So the temperature is rising. Waiting, waiting, still waiting for it to get up to heat. Um, now, I did indicate that I was making this with whole milk. Um, if you want to make a lower fat Greek yogurt, you can do a 1% or a 2% milk. Um, and in order to make it thicker and to up the protein content, what you need to do is just stir one packet of dried non-fat milk powder into it. Um, you can do that after, or you can actually do that like before you add in the, um, the yogurt culture. Just so you know, like if you're into that low fat thing. Still waiting. This part takes, I don't know, this waiting part, it's probably like 15 minutes like between getting it hot and then cooling it down. As you can see, we are heading towards 185 degrees. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna call it at 104. And pull it out. Turn the heat off, because it's gonna keep rising. And now it's time for the cold water bath. Right. Here is the now scalded at 185 degrees milk gone into the cold water bath. See? Um, now I'm gonna take my trusty thermometer out and I'm gonna pay attention to seeing how quickly it gets to 110 degrees. So like I said, this is not rocket science, it's just paying attention. All right, 110 degrees. I'm done with the thermometer. I'm going to take the plain yogurt. It does not need to be Greek yogurt, but it should be unflavored. I'm just going to put that in there. And now I'm going to whisk it in to incorporate and remove it from the water bath. I put the lid on it, um, wrapped it in a towel, put a towel on top to reserve the heat, and put my back warmer underneath it. And now I'm just going to set it for, oh, I don't know, medium high. And now I'm going to let it sit for about eight hours. And if the cat wants to eat, she's just going to have to figure out a way to get around the yogurt being made. And, uh, you know, something occurred to me while I was making this. There's no way Tabby is ever going to do this. She is not patient enough. So that's okay. I love Tabby enough to make yogurt for her. Okay, so it has been about seven hours. And my yogurt has been over here quietly doing its thing. So I'm going to remove all the towels from it. Come closer. Oh. And so now we have yogurt. So this is a lot. This is a gallon and a half, which you can eat as is, but I do like to strain it. So I'm going to pour it into the cheesecloth lined colander that I have prepared. It is sitting inside a large mixing bowl to capture the whey. Some people like to use the whey. Um, <laughs> oh, oh no! There we go. 
A little overflow there. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> uh, anyway, so there you have it. Find out. But now I'm going to take this, I'm going to put it in the fridge, I'm going to let it sit overnight. Um, a lot of liquid's going to come out, and we're going to have a nice, thick, rich uh, Greek yogurt. Way is bluish because it's full of vitamins, by the way. Okay, it's the next morning, and my yogurt has had a chance to strain all night. You can see it's gone down significantly in level. Just look at all that beautiful, organic, homemade Greek yogurt. Let me point out that this is only about half of the way. I actually poured off um, a good deal of it last night. So you can see the Greek yogurt is very thick and smooth. I'm just going to decant it into containers. And there you have it. I wanted to point out that working with cheesecloth, it seems like there could be a lot of waste, but actually if you really gently pull the yogurt away from the sides, it'll just come off completely with very little waste. So I made about <clears throat> two and a half, 32 ounce containers of organic Greek yogurt. Plus, there's probably two quarts of whey. I, I took care of some of the others last night and poured it off. Um, but I did it for nine dollars. You know that includes the cheesecloth, and I did buy the cheesecloth at the grocery store, which is probably the most expensive place that you can buy it. So it's a pretty good deal. You know, it is a little bit labor intensive. You kind of have to pay attention for about forty-five minutes, but I think it's worth it.